In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up an Android emulator. Emulators are pretend phones that run on your computer. They come in handy for three main reasons. First off, you don't have to have a physical Android device to test your app. Also, if you have trouble connecting it, or you don't have your cable with you, you can always run your apps. Second, you can test your app on devices you don't actually own, so you don't have to buy an Android Wear device to develop apps for the Android Watch. Lastly, you can run your app on two devices simultaneously. This is really handy if you're testing a chat application. You can have the emulator up running the app at the same time as your physical device. So without further ado, let's create a virtual device. First, we're going to start a new project. We're going to call it my first app. And under project location, we're going to put it in the projects folder that we created earlier. So click the three dots and navigate to the projects folder that you created. Windows users, remember that you created this projects folder directly on your C drive. Click next. You can leave the default settings here, they're fine. Then select empty activity and click next. And finally click finish. Android 2 is going to build your project. And after it's done, it should drop you off at this screen. Mind you, depending on the speed of your computer, this could take a little while. You can monitor progress on the status bar at the bottom of the screen. Now that Android Studio has finished building our project, we're going to create a virtual device. Bring up the Android Virtual Device Manager by either clicking this small icon here or going to Tools, Android, AVD Manager. As you can see, I've already created quite a few, but your list might be blank. So click on Create Virtual Device, and then you see that there's a whole host of devices that you can choose from. You can create tablets, phones, Android watches, and even simulate Android TV. Let's create a Nexus 5X emulator. So select it and click Next. Android Studio will then recommend a system image, which means they're giving you a choice on the architecture of the pretend phone. Now you wanna make sure you choose something with the Intel-based architecture because it's gonna run a lot faster. Also, chances are you've got a 64-bit machine. You wanna choose something that says x86 underscore 64. If you've got a 32-bit machine, and we went over how to check this in a previous video, you want to choose something that says x86. The choice of API level is up to you, and will depend on which SDK platforms that you've got installed. For the purpose of this course, Marshmallow, Lollipop, or Nougat will work just fine. So I've got a 64-bit machine, so I'm going to choose Marshmallow x86 underscore 64, and click Next. On this screen, you can customize the emulator a bit more, even to the extent of choosing how much RAM you want to give it. So I'm just gonna click finish, and after it's done saving the virtual device, it will appear in your list. So let's test it out. Hit the green play symbol, and then wait for a bit, and you should see a new window appear and the Android emulator starting up. Now this could take a little while, depending on the speed of your machine, and depending on if you've got hardware acceleration enabled. So what do I mean by that? There's a component called Intel Haxam, the Hardware Accelerated Execution Manager that you can install with Android Studio. If you've got Hardware Acceleration enabled, you're going to see this message. Emulator running in fast vert mode. If you don't see this message, your emulator is going to run much, much slower and you should probably install Haxam. I'll quickly show you how to install it if you don't have it already. You'll find all the Android Studio components that you can install in the SDK Manager. So either click on this little icon or go to Tools and open the SDK Manager. And here, you can even launch the standalone SDK Manager to get a much more granular view of all the different components. If we scroll right to the bottom, then we're going to see the Intel x86 Emulator Accelerator, Haxam Installer. And this is what we need. We need to put a check mark there and click Install Package. Accept the license agreement and install. Now, chances are when you first installed Android Studio, it would have already prompted you and asked you if you wanted to install Haxam. But if you haven't, this is how you can find it. It's important to note that you're not done yet, even though it says installed. And also, some antiviruses actually prevent you from installing this component successfully. So you might actually have to disable your antivirus in order to go through with this. The next step is navigating to where you've got the Android SDK installed. So this is under Android SDK, SDK location. Copy this path 
and then your Explorer or Finder navigate to this location. The quickest way of doing this is you go to the folder directly by pasting in the SDK location. And here we are, right? And you can see the path here, library, Android, SDK. Then you would go to extras, Intel, hardware manager, and here it is. There should be that install file under extras, Intel, and then this long folder name here. Double click on the install file and follow through with the install instructions. This is the point where you might have to disable your antivirus for a successful installation. Great, now you should be all set up with your Android emulator. But I think it's worth mentioning there are some popular alternatives to the stock emulator that comes bundled with Android Studio. One of the most popular ones is Genie Motion. Now for a long time, the stock Android emulator was very, very slow. But with Android Studio 2.0, it's gotten a lot, lot quicker. And the main selling point of Genie Motion has always been speed. So I think for most of us, the standard emulator will work just fine. But for those of you who are curious and want to check out some of the other features these guys have packed into the product, head over to GenieMotion.com and you can try out a free version of Genie Motion. Just be aware that some of the advanced features may be locked behind a paywall.